All right, we are at question eight from the May 2024 CSET Mathematics paper. Now here, this is about, well, this is section two. Answer all questions, all working must be clearly shown. You see that part? All working must be clearly shown. So this is under the topic algebra relations, functions and graphs. Now remember, you must make an effort to answer the question before you watch me work out the solution. And remember, you know, these are past paper solutions. You must ensure that you understand the principle behind the math and remember these are not the same questions coming in the next exam all right notice I take my time and explain the reasoning behind the math as we go along we're not rushing we're not in exam today all right all right so if you haven't done so yet pause the video write down the questions on paper and try these questions I have a link where you can download the entire paper to try so go ahead okay so you tried this question now finished let's look at it here the function f and g are defined as follows so you have f of x equal 2x minus 1 over 3 and g of x equals 5 minus x squared determine the values of g of 2. What do you get for g of 2? Let's see g of 2. Remember the question says g of x equals 5 minus x squared. Now for g of 2, it will not be g of x equal 5 minus x squared anymore. It will be g of 2 equal 5 minus 2 squared. See that? You remove x and put 2 where x was. So it is 5 minus 4, which is 1. Okay, so you have that part there. Let's see part B. F inverse of 3. All right. Now let's rewrite. F of x. F of x equals 2x minus 1 divided by 3. And now we want F inverse of 3. You have to remember the steps when you're going to invert a function. So, some steps here. Step 1. You change f of x to y. So, we're going to have y equals 2x minus 1 divided by 3, all right? Now, step 2. You interchange x and y. So, you switch them around, right? You interchange x and y. So remember, you know, when you invert a function, whatever the input, whatever the output of the function is, is going to be the input of the inverse. It's like you're reversing everything. You put in a number into a function, you get an answer. 
If you put that answer into the inverse of the function, work it out, you get back a number. So you have the number, the function, you get answer. You put the answer into the inverse of the function, you get back the number. Alright? So, it's like you're reversing a process. So here now, interchange x and y. So you're going to have x equals 2y minus 1 over 3. Okay? Then after that, step 3, you transpose for y. So these steps will make you essentially get the inverse. Now the transposition part is will be the most generally be the most um, difficult part. So transpose, make y the subject. So remember now what you have is x equals 2y minus 1 divided by 3. What you can do here, let me rewrite it. x equals 2y minus 1 divided by 3. Suppose you multiply both sides by 3. Multiply the left by 3, the right by 3. And the reason why I do that is because you want to get rid of all of those numbers that are mixed up with the y. So you eventually end up with y alone equal. So you get rid of 3 here. So you have 3x is equal to 2y minus 1. Now get rid of the 1 by adding 1 to both sides. So you plus 1 on the left plus 1 on the right. What happened? You're going to have 3x plus 1 equals, well, this is gone. Negative 1 plus 1, that's gone. So you have 2y. Then the next thing you can do here, to get rid of that 2 so that you have y alone equal, you divide by 2. Alright? So when you do that, 2 cancels 2. So, you're going to have, let's put the, well, you're going to have 3x plus 1 over 2 equals y. Let's put the y on the left, so y equals 3x plus 1 over 2. Then the step, final step, step 4, what you do, you change y to what it really is, f inverse of x all right so now you say f inverse of x is equal to 3x plus 1 divided by 2 so that's what i get as f inverse of x 3x plus 1 over 2 so let's write it over here now um So, f inverse of x equals 3x plus 1 over 2. Alright, we could try a little thing and test it. Let's put a number into f of x and get out an answer and see what happens. If we put in, um, which number now? 6 into f of x, we'll get 2 times 6 minus 1 over 3, which is 12 minus 1 is 11. 11 over 3, that's the answer. Now let's put the answer into the inverse and see if we get back um, 6. So you put 6 and you get out 11 over 3. Let's put the 11 over 3 into the inverse and see if we get out 6. So 3 times, so we put in 11 over 3. What will we get out? 3 times 11 over 3 plus 1 over 2. 3 cancels 3. So 11 plus 1 is 12 over 2, which is 12 over 2 equals 6. Ah, we get out 6. 
So it is really the inverse. We test it and see that it indeed is the inverse. All right. All right. So what else is there to do? What they say? What's going on? Oh. <coughs> What they say here, derive an expression in its simplest form. For f of f g of x. Let's go back to this. They want f g of x. So f of x is 2x minus 1 over 3. So f of x is 2x minus 1 over 3. And g of x is... 5 minus x squared g of x is 5 minus x squared alright so what happened here fg of x now fg of x you know means you have f of something now that something is going to replace x in f f of what f of g of x so that's what it really is so it's f of what no this is g of x g of x is what it's 5 minus x squared so it's f of that no f of x is 2 times x f of x is 2 times x. So f of 5 minus x squared means 2 times 5 minus x squared. And then you have the minus 1 over 3. See that? So that is fg of x. So f. Now let me write it back the usual way. fg of x is. Alright, so you have it 2 times 5 minus x squared minus 1 over 3. So multiply 2 times 5, 5 gives you 10, minus 2 times x squared gives you 2x squared, minus 1, all over 3. So you have 10 minus 1 is 9. So negative 2x squared plus 9 divided by 3. Alright, so that's what we have. fg of x. Negative 2x squared plus 9 divided by 3. Now, let's see what else is going on. Okay. What is it? Sketch the graph of the function g of x in the space provided below. On your graph, indicate the maximum slash minimum point. And the roots of the function. Interesting. Let us. Uh, it's three marks for this. Let us see. Now. Let's say to sketch. G of x. What was G of x again? 5 minus x squared. So G of x. Equals 5 minus x squared. All right. Now, here, first of all, you have to remember what the curve y equal x squared look like. So you remember, it will look something like this. Alright. Alright. The thing now, in fact, let's rewrite g of x like this. Negative x squared plus 5. Same thing. Now, negative x squared means all positive values will become negative. So it will now look more like this. Alright? We switch around like that. So we've done this one. Let's 
kind of cross it out a bit then plus 5 mean you push this upwards 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 so it will now be somewhat like this all right so you see that so this will be 5 minus x squared same thing as um g of x equal same thing as negative x squared plus 5 see that and they say indicate the maximum minimum maximum value so the max it has a maximum value so maximum value will be 5 because it was at 0 and you push everything up at 5 they say and the roots of the function you want the roots of the function that means where does it cut the x-axis no where it cut the x-axis is where y equals 0 x-axis is the line y equals 0 that means g of x is 0 because we're using g of x as our y here so you're going to say negative x squared plus 5 equals 0 so if you subtract 5 from both sides you're going to say negative x squared equals negative 5 so therefore positive x squared equal positive 5 then what is x x is going to be positive and negative the square root of 5 all right so the roots the roots will be the positive square root of 5 and negative square root of 5 all right you're going to get two point something whatever it is you can use a calculator and work it out um, when you do that, let me use my calculator here. The square root of five, two point two three six, all right? So about two point two four or two point two. So two point two three six, and also negative two point two three six. So on the sketch, indicate it. So what you can say, this is. 2.236 and this one is negative 2.236 so you have the maximum 5 the roots are negative 2.236 and positive 2.236 so that is that let's I think part B something else um, Yeah, this is part B of question 8. Alright, we're going to do this in our next video.